Hello YouTube. This video is a follow-up to the gaming on a Mac Pro 3 Com 1 video that I did a little while ago. Because now we have finally upgraded the graphics card. So, we can see that we're running the Radeon RX 570 right now. The upgrade advisor is saying this CPU, well, we really cannot advise any upgrades for it. Well, that makes sense because these E5462 Xeons from 2007 or 2008 actually, these I think are late 2007, they're not really all that powerful. We knew that before. There's nothing new there. So again, here's GPU-Z. So you can see we're not uh, fooling around here. We've got the Radeon RX 570. This is XFX, so that's, that's correct. We're running at PCI Express X16 mode. 256-bit memory bus. We have 8 gigabytes of Samsung DDR5, or GDDR5 rather, on this thing. And we're running the latest adrenaline drivers that I could find. They are from late August of 2020. So, um, yeah. Full fat RX 570 in an old Mac Pro. That's now 12 years old. So uh, let's revisit the benchmarks that we did in the last video and uh, compare them side by side and see uh, what it looks like. And here we are looking at the very first benchmark. On the left hand side we have the RX 570 and on the right hand side we have the Radeon HD 5870. This is Mafia 2 Definitive Edition, a remaster that was released in this year. We can see that the RX 570 is doing about 60 FPS and the 5870 is not even close at under 30 most of the time. The second benchmark is Mafia 2 Regular Edition. The 5870 run on the right was actually capped by VSync, so it would have probably run about 70 FPS at the best. And the RX 570 is very comfortable running 100 FPS plus most of the time. The third benchmark here is Grand Theft Auto 4, running at the same settings on both cards, same resolution, everything. It would appear that they are pretty much around the same mark still when it comes to the benchmark, hovering around somewhere in the mid 30s to uh, just about 60 FPS. On average, it would seem that the uh, RX 470 is slightly higher, but the differences are pretty much negligible. And here we've arrived at the second to last benchmark. This is CSGO. The latest version will not display the afterburner overlay, so I had to enlarge the uh, FPS counter that Steam implements. It's not completely apples to apples, but it's close enough. Again, on the left hand side, the RX 570 doing quite well. There is a noticeable difference between the two. So this does not appear to be a fully CPU bottlenecked situation. We'll revisit this again during the gameplay part of this video, but uh, so far they are looking pretty equal, but the RX 570 does appear to have a slight edge over the 5870 here.
And here is the 3 Mark Fire Strike score. We quadrupled the graphic score and more than doubled the total score. Alright, so let's kick off the gameplay demonstrations using CSGO or Counter Strike Global Offensive. I'll see if I can get the FPS counter uh, a bit bigger in edit. Alright, so we're on Dust 2 again with the same settings as last time. Now hovering around 70 FPS, 80 here. That was a good shot. The mouse is going in. The surface is terrible. That was impressive. Just like last time, I'm getting my ass handed to me. They're all AKs though. There we go. I just keep spawning near enemies that are still... Wow, that was terrible. <laughs> Just one of your enemies that are still invulnerable, though. Well, that's okay. I'm talking about myself, obviously. The frame rate is frequently above 60, actually most of the time. Just about to shotgun him. Cause that's fun. Oh, didn't do enough damage. Anyway, let's see his go. So we definitely went in game fr uh, from the lowest that we've seen is about 40 FPS to way up 200 on Dust 2. That's a pretty good improvement over last time where we were hovering about the 40s on the top end. So even CSGO was not 100% CPU limited, it would seem. All right. On to the next game. All right, let's uh, go for Crisis. Let's go over the options first. We can now select 1920 by 1080, so I have. Again, all very high settings. We can also set objects to very high now. Apparently we overlooked that one. So now we're gonna go for the full-on, everything maxed out approach. We'll load back into the game that we played last time. And see what kind of FPS we get. Historically, Crisis runs very poorly on AMD cards. As we saw last time with 5870, sometimes it can be pretty good. So here we are, loading in progress. Anytime now. And here we are. Everything's loading in. Just going to give it a little bit of time. I'm not interested really. So, yeah, again, we're in the low 40s. It's getting slightly better now that we're waiting for it to render something. There we go, 50 FPS. We can go through this gorgeous looking water. It was gorgeous in 2007 anyway. Still in the 30s. 1920 by 1080, maxed out. A little dip into the 20s. No real CPU pegging. GPU is at near 100% sometimes. It's fluctuating a bit. This is not a very hot running card, that much is obvious. Ok, 
shape. So if we compare that, let's run it at high details at 720p, just for comparison's sake. And it rename the motion blur. Thank you for that. Turn that back off real quick. Nobody likes that. And it's actually more of the same. So yeah, that would definitely imply that we're still a bit CPU limited. Well, we get shot from this boat here. I always hate that dude. So yeah, definitely a CPU limited the game here. But it does scale up to about 40 to 50 FPS even on this old Mac Pro. So, can it run Crisis? Yes, it still can and even better than before. And here we are in Mafia 2 Definitive Edition. I've decided not to show the regular version and I will also not show City Skylines in uh, this video because City Skylines showed absolutely no difference at all in terms of frame rate. It's very, very CPU limited. And uh, this game was very GPU limited as it would seem because it's running very, very well. We're hovering around the 60 FPS mark. We had these frame rates last time in the regular Mafia 2 version, but this is definitely the definitive edition. As you can see, uh, because we can pick this car, which is of course the car from Mafia 3. We're still around the 60 FPS mark. Everything is set to high detail. And isotropic filtering is at 16x. And the resolution is 1920 by 1080. And as you could tell from the benchmark from Mafia 2 regular edition, that was around 100 FPS, so there's really no point in showing any real in-game performance. Because this is absolutely playable. This is pretty enjoyable too. There's a small number of hitches every now and again, but they're just small frame dips. There's a couple of CPU cores that are at 80% or more, so, you know... You're never really going to alleviate any CPU bottlenecking because the system is just not that powerful. Not anymore, at least. So, uh, let's finish off with a bit of GTA 4 for the real reason that the benchmark showed about 50, 60 FPS, but the gameplay was around 20. Let's see uh, if that's any different. This is also a notoriously CPU demanding game. It was ported very poorly from the Xbox 360. So let's see how the PC version runs now that we have a beefier graphics card. And now we're in GTA 4. Okay. It's still not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a better frame rate. Alright, let's steal a car here. Uh, it's definitely, definitely better. The last time we were hovering around 20, 25 FPS. When we go out to this stretch here, we're at 50 to 80 FPS now. So I guess he's struggling with the shadows here underneath the train lines. The train tracks around there. With all these shadows, it has to calculate. It would appear that that's part of the problem. But now we're at 40 FPS, so almost double. CPU cores, many of them are at 80 or 90% and above. So again, we're in a pretty CPU limited scenario here, despite the GPU reading 100% a lot of the time. Let's get some speed up here. We're still around a 40 FPS mark. Oh, we couldn't quite clear that barrier. Such a shame. Such a shame.
Well, that kind of carnage wasn't appreciated much by the police, it would seem. They have no sense of humor. Oh, wow. Actually shot him out of the car. Interesting. Yep, this is definitely playable. This is how I used to play it back in the day, really, when I even had a dual-core CPU. This was basically how it ran. So, yeah. Looking good. So, yeah. With that, and the benchmarks that I've shown in the previous part of this video, I suppose uh, this really shows that there was still definitely some performance to be had by upgrading the graphics card to a faster one. Also, it takes me back to the days when I had a 7950 in my Mac Pro 3.1, when that was my main system. But uh, this is actually still a bit faster. So, uh, yeah, I enjoyed this little experiment here. I hope you also enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.